Good morning, afternoon, and evening, everybody. My name is Maya the King, and you know, some people say that they pick their nose, but I feel like I was just born with mine. Now then, today we're taking a look at a game just released on Steam this morning called Norland. I hope I'm saying it right. Released in early access, so expect some issues. Developed by Long Jaunt and published by Hooded Horse, and they also published Manor Lords. Cool. Selling for $30. So, this is a management simulation game where you take control of a noble family in a fictional world, I think. You have to manage their needs, assign work, lord over peasants, fight wars, and eventually become emperor of everything. There's really not much more to the story than that, so that's pretty much the gist of the game. Now, as always, let's go into the good and the bad, followed by my final thoughts, alright? Alright, so up first is the good. So the very first positive point that I'd like to talk about is the sound quality. The music is pretty nice to listen to. It's got that fantasy, medieval kind of music twang to it, and it falls into the background fairly nicely without worrying about it being overbearing or disappearing completely. Fits the mood, fits the theme, and sounds great. The sound effects also sound really good. Listening to your people chop wood or listening to your soldiers fight sounds very realistic and it's not going to make my ears bleed. There's partial voice acting here in a made-up or possibly foreign language of your people whenever they talk to each other, which I really like the idea of. I mean, at the end of the day, your citizens and lords go to the pub and drink, sing, and talk with each other, and you can hear it all and the ambiance and the sound, plus them talking, and it just, it just sounds exactly the way you want it to. It was really pleasant. The next positive point I want to talk about is the gameplay. However, before I go into it, this will also be in the negatives. The gameplay here has a lot of promise, and it's really freaking interesting. Unlike a lot of games in this genre, you don't actually control your people, like in Banished Manor Lords or City Skylines, or, or RimWorld, right, where your people live their own lives without you needing to manage each and every one of them. You can kind of direct them by telling one of your noble lords to instruct them on what they need to do each day at their job, but otherwise, they get up in the morning and they go to church on their own, then they go straight to work on their own, and then when the working hours are over and done, your people will rush to their next activity that they want to partake in. It could be training, going home, interacting with other citizens, or chilling at the pub to relax. Your lords themselves, you don't really control either. It's a lot like RimWorld, right? You issue them jobs or tasks, and then they choose when to do these tasks and how to do these tasks. So, yeah, it's kind of like a vague, broad management kind of style. You tell your people what you want done, and they just continue to live their lives while also trying to get done what you tell them to get done. In terms of combat, there is warfare in the game, and it's a lot like how uh, how uh, Manor Lords does it, where you create a barracks and then you hire some of your citizens as soldiers, and then you make sure that you have the equipment needed in storage so that when they're conscripted, they can be fully outfitted. You can build a training ground where then they can train and get better at fighting, and then when there's bandits or a battle or something, you raise your banner, call your citizens to war while they're, where they'll go and grab their gear, line up under a lord or lords that you choose to take into battle. This works similar to how Rim world's battles work where you can script them and then at that point you're in full control of where they go and what they fight then you watch them go and it's actually kind of interesting and fun to watch Also, like in RimWorld, each person has green and red text showing what is either making them happy or what is making them sad or angry. Are they lacking entertainment? Are they homeless? Did they try to flirt with someone and then they were ignored? Did someone spread rumors about them? And the list keeps going on. Your job in, in managing them is to try and solve the problems that you can and keep your lords and your people happy. There's also diplomacy in this game, as you you own only a small segment of land. You can build relations with other neighboring lords through various means that you could also declare war on them and invade them. You can establish trade with them, marry your daughter to their son or your son to their daughter, thus forming an alliance, each with pros and cons. You can establish trade routes with these other nations, which gives you different bonuses, but there's also a special trader that will show up to your kingdom every now and then where you can trade immediately. There's also the church, which is like the all-encompassing authority on this continent, and sometimes they'll send a holy man to your kingdom. Eventually, a holy man can move into your kingdom as a sort of representative that you want to keep happy or risk the wrath of the Inquisition. There's just so much here in terms of gameplay that even now I haven't told you everything because there's just so much to tell here. It makes it far more realistic than I thought it would be, and it's really interesting as I continue playing and, and continue learning more about this world and how things work, and it's just how everything connects together, and it's just, it's just really cool. I can't, I, I can't keep going or risk the video being too long, but I think you get the idea. The gameplay here is intense. Next up for the positives is the user interface. It's very clean, easy to navigate and understand, and very, very similar to the RimWorld user interface, which, as an avid player of that game, helped me get more comfortable and understand and learn it here. And last but not least for the positives is the stability. The game is very stable. 
The only time it ever broke on me, it didn't even really break. It just pauses when it autosaves, which I can't even tell if that's an issue or if that's on purpose. But besides that, I never noticed anything that was a big break for me. There was no frame rate dropping, no clipping, and as far as I can tell, the computer NPCs weren't doing anything out of the ordinary either. They, you know, It's not like they weren't doing their tasks appropriately. So basically, from my understanding, the game was pretty stable and working just as it was intended, which is nice for an early access game. Now, I know I said that was the last positive, and it was. However, I do want to briefly talk about the graphics, mostly because I forgot. They're not bad. They're not great, but I don't think they're supposed to be. The graphics work well enough for the game, for a game like this, and I guess the thing I like the most is the attention to detail and the contrasting colors and borders. It was actually a fairly nice game to look at. It wasn't like the greatest thing I've ever seen, but it was good enough to be put in the positives, but it, it's not all bad, so I, you know, I wanted to at least say this. Uh, I, I guess when I and when I say attention to detail, the one thing that surprisingly weirdly stuck out to me was the beds. When you look in one of these buildings, because when you're not close up or when you're not clicking on one of the buildings, you just see the whole building. But it's when you click on it or whatever that you can actually see inside of it. And when you can see inside of it, you can actually see so much stuff in it that it was actually really impressive and really interesting to see. So, you know, I, I, I'm not sure if it was good enough to put in the positives. Maybe it was, maybe it wasn't, but I, I personally really like the graphics, but there could be some people out there who don't. I guess that's why I didn't put it in the positives. All right, so now on to the negatives. But before that, please do me a favor, and if you're finding this video, you know, entertaining or at least informative, then please leave a like, a comment, or subscribe. It costs you nothing, but it helps me out a lot, and each and every single one of you who do, it means a lot to me. So I'd really appreciate the help. Thank you very much. All right, then, now we got to go into the negatives. I think the first thing that really irritated me with this game was its tutorial. It's kind of absolutely awful. I hate these kinds of tutorials. It's just a wall of text with a single solitary picture, and the worst part is that they don't even explain everything to me. They say a lot of things, like this is what this does, but then there's no further explanation. For instance, they told me that a building can break down and will need to be repaired. Great, makes sense. Then they give me an example of one building and what it needs when it breaks down. Didn't tell me how to check. Didn't tell me how to see when or how a building will break down. Didn't tell me how to manage a building's breakdown. See what I mean? Or it'll say things like, your lords can manage these buildings and every day they'll give instructions to the workers there. Okay, fine, fair, fair enough. But how many buildings can my lord manage successfully? Doesn't say. Can my lord even manage more than one production building at all? Doesn't say. What happens if I have more buildings than I have lords to manage? Doesn't say. How do I get more lords to manage more buildings? Doesn't say. What are the consequences or positives that come with having my lords manage a certain amount of buildings? Is there a way to find out how many they can manage effectively? Is there a number somewhere telling me the efficiency so I can accurately assign my lords? I have no freaking idea. This is simply one example of how lost I was in the gameplay. I did what the game told me to do, and my kingdom was running into problems. People are upset because they can't worship their god. Okay, but I built a shrine and a temple, so why are they upset? Your people want a place to relax, but is there any tips or instructions on what they need to relax? No! So I built a tavern thinking it was the obvious choice, and now my people start going to the tavern, and then the next day, guess what? They've got the same complaint, even though last night they were just there relaxing. I just... I don't understand, and that's the game's fault for not properly explaining this stuff to me. This is what I mean by a crappy tutorial. When you're done with the tutorial, you should have a basic general understanding of how most of the game works. It's supposed to teach you how to play the game, not leave you wondering or floundering around figuring it out for yourself. The last negative I have is the gameplay. I did mention that it'd be both the good and the bad, and I think after the last negative you can kind of understand what my issues with the game are. But at a certain point, the gameplay does start to feel a little bit repetitive and boring. Uh, at a certain point you're just kind of sitting there waiting for stuff to get done, and then when you get too large it starts to take far longer to get anything done as everyone is over capacity with responsibilities. I had to wait a week for one of my lumber mills to get upgraded despite having all the wood I needed to do so simply because my king was busy with all the other shops. And don't get me wrong, there's a lot of cool aspects to the game's gameplay, but I feel like the lords having to return to the same workshop every day to tell your people the same thing every time is a little annoying. How some things just choose not to work without any explainable reason. Like, I sent my king to, do an, uh, to, to go to another kingdom to bond with its king, but when he got there, the game just said, for some reason, verbatim, for some reason, your king was unable to accomplish this task. Like, I mean, couldn't you have at least given me a BS reason or something? But despite the few issues I had with the gameplay not making sense, everything was pretty solid, but I still wanted to mention this just so I could be as transparent as possible. 
Alright, so that's all I can think of negatively about the game. Let's sum up. The sound design is great, the game looks good, the gameplay is different and interesting as well as complex and fairly well designed, but it does have a few issues. The tutorial is really, really awful, and I didn't learn hardly anything I needed to know, and the game's unfinished, selling for $30. This one was really tricky for me, I had to go back and forth a lot. I do like the game, but I just think it needs some ironing out. There's just so much I don't know, and with no real explanations or conclusions to issues, I found myself constantly in the dark and unable to learn more or get a feel of the game. I think it's got some serious promise and an amazing foundation. This could end up becoming the next big thing or the next RimWorld, but it's just, there's too much stuff here with not at all explained. And when something is explained, it's very poorly done so. I feel like the only reason why I had any issues with this game is simply because I just didn't understand how it works. It tells you to do things, but not why or how. An example of this is the game offers me a temporary Lord who visits. I can hire them and now I've got a new Lord to direct my peasants and you know, ease the work stress on my other lords. So I hired them, and when their contract was up, the game said that I could renew their contract or offer them a title, but then it didn't tell me how to do either of those things or what the consequences of doing those, th those things could be. That's how most of the learning in this game works. Do this, but then not tell you how or why. So because of that, I'm in the complete dark, not really knowing why things are or are not happening. As for my recommendation, well, honestly, I personally think it's a pretty solid game. I think if you're into these kinds of games, you should definitely give it a try. Just because I had issues learning its mechanics and managing these things doesn't mean that you will. I personally was frustrated by not understanding how things in the game work and not knowing what to do or why things weren't working, but that doesn't mean you will. I completed the tutorial. I spent a good deal of time trying to figure this game out, but constantly found myself confused. But that could just be me. If you like what you saw and you want to give it a try, then I encourage you to do so. If not, I would also understand. So. That's it. That's all I got for this video. Thanks so much for watching, everyone, with a special thanks to those of you who stuck around till the end. If you have any questions or concerns, please let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I can't wait to see you all again on my next adventure. So until then, I bid you all farewell.